In this video, I want to explain how we can use our model, which we came up with, our factor analysis model, in order to estimate the correlation between observed variables. And the example which we're going to use here is we're trying to explain the variance between how happy an individual feels, their life expectancy, and the number of doctor visits which that individual actually undertakes. And the model which we've come up with is we suppose that there are two underlying factors which determine these three observables, one of them being an individual's physical health and the other one being an individual's mental health. And the idea is that these two unseen and unobserved factors load on to different degrees on each of these observed factors. So based on our sample, we can come up with our variance and covariance matrix. So what we're doing here is we're saying for our variables, which in this case I'm taking to have been standardized, can we derive an estimate of the correlation between variables by using our models? So for example, our sample correlation between the variables might look something like this. Down the diagonal, we've just got ones because we standardize our variables such that their variance is one. Then we might have something like the correlation between y1 and y2 is equal to 0.4. Between y1 and y3, it might be 0.2. And then finally, between y2 and y3, it might be 0.6. And note that I don't need to specify any of the variables up in this sort of upper triangle here because the covariance of y1 with y2 is exactly the same as it is between y2 and y1. So these are just going to be a reflection of those which we see in the bottom triangle. So the purpose of factor analysis is partly to try and reproduce this variance covariance matrix and the idea being that then this sort of model which we come up with could then be useful to predict the variance and covariance between observed variables in a population. So first of all we can write down our model and I'm going to start off by writing our model in vector form and then later on we may extend this to the case of matrices. So we have the, our vector of dependent variables, so this is y with a, a sort of line underneath it, is equal to capital lambda, where capital lambda is a matrix of the weightings on each of the, or with each of the factors on each of the observed variables, times eta, where eta here is just in this case f1 and f2 as a vector, plus epsilon, where epsilon here is e1, e2 and e3. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to use our model to come up with the variance of y as our model predicts it. And the variance of a vector, if we're dealing with something, as I say, which is a random vector rather than a, just a random variable, this is the same as the expectation of y minus the expected value of y times y minus the expected value of y or transposed. And then what we do is we use one of the assumptions which we actually spoke about in the last video, which is just that the expected value of y is equal to zero because we standardize the variable by removing its mean. What this does is it removes these expected value of y terms here, which makes our term or our expression that much easier to deal with. It's just the expected value now of y times y transposed. And then we can use our model up here in order to work on this a little bit further. This is just the same as the expectation of lambda times eta plus epsilon times lambda eta plus epsilon all transposed. And then what we can do is we could essentially take the transpose of the second bracket so the first bracket just remains the same, that's just the expected value of lambda times eta plus epsilon times the second bracket, which is essentially when you apply the transpose to a sum, then it's just the same as the transpose applied to the, each of the individual elements in the sum. And applying it to this first term here, because it's a product, we know that the transpose of a product of things essentially is the same thing as the transpose of the elements when they're inverted. So the order of multiplication actually inverts under taking the transpose of a product. By inverts, I mean just the order reverses. 
So we can write the second term as eta transposed times lambda transposed plus epsilon transposed. And we're going to continue to work away at this expression in the next video and we're going to then come up with how our model actually predicts the variance between observed variables.